So I'm here with McKinley Butson, who is our Australian Stockholm Junior Water Prize winner for 2017. Uh, McKinley's joined us to tell us all about her Stockholm Junior Water Prize experience uh, and what a wonderful journey that's been for her personally. And I think it's also going to end up being a very good one professionally in the future. Uh, so McKinley, tell us a little bit about how you actually got involved in the Australian Stockholm Junior Water Prize competition. Yeah, so um, water's been something that I've always been interested in. I started this journey uh, way back in year five um, when I was looking specifically at solar panels and, and what affects their efficiency and I created a device which was able to almost double the output of a solar panel and um, from that I thought well I've got this power what can I do with it and of course uh, global water crisis um, it's such a big issue at the moment it's so prevalent in uh, particularly developing communities so it was something that I definitely wanted to target and um, the uh, competition that you guys hold definitely was just a great avenue to do that. Yeah, and it was fantastic to see that that's something that you're passionate about from a young age. Uh, do you think that when you talk to your friends about water scarcity and, and issues in developing countries, uh, have you been able to talk to them a lot more about that now since undergoing your project? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, just doing the project has given me the opportunity to share this knowledge that I've found out with other people. Um, for example, there was a year eight geography assessment where they had to uh, create a children's storybook which was designed at um, specifically informing people about the issue of water um, scarcity, uh, quality, um, hygiene and so I was able to speak to them and really um, help to inspire them and hopefully um, empower them a little bit to um, pursue um, a water. Yeah. Some, uh, yeah. looking at those solutions into the future. Yes, definitely. What, um, when you were doing your research and, and looking into this, what did you find um, one of the, the most scariest things about water in a global context? Yeah, look, I think um, one of the things that particularly sparked my interest, especially in the medical side of things, um, creating sterile water, is that one in five people in developing countries um, who undergo a surgery will die as a result of infection. And I think mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot of people that that could potentially be saved um, simply by access to safe water. Mm. And so your project has, has definitely got uh, that medical implication and the, yeah. um, the application towards medical use. Uh, tell us a little bit about your project and, and the system that you've developed and what it does. Yeah, so uh, my project looked at creating a device uh, targeted at developing communities, which is able to provide both potable drinking water mm -hmm. and also medical grade sterile water in one uh, portable, self-sustainable system. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And as you put this together, so um, where do you see that application? And, and I know one of the things you had to look at was the cost to produce yes. that. Um, so what have you come to the conclusion in terms of that adaptability to mm -hmm. communities and that sort of cost as well? Yeah, well, look, one of the main things that I was looking at was a portability because, you know, a lot of these rural areas have to travel hours um, if they want to go to a hospital and what happens a lot of the time is they'll have community clinics which are basically a tent with a couple of um, hospital beds in them that travel around and so that was one of the big um, hurdles I had to try and overcome having a system that can travel with the doctor yes. uh, for different communities and um, obviously as well the cost that's something that I've had to look into and you know a lot of these um, particularly for the safe drinking water a lot of the elements in it are sort, able to be sourced within a community. So there's sand, there's charcoal, um, all of these things um, are inexpensive um, and also very effective. Mm, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I have to imagine that you've had um, some teachers who've also helped you yes. along the way and inspired you. So how have they inspired your project? Yeah, look, I think um, just the support network. I think this is something obviously a bit daunting, undergoing a project um, of this size, a lot of encouragement, a lot of um, support from the teachers has really helped me get through it. Yeah, so we know that the teachers have such a big role to play uh, in, in sort of inspiring this next generation of water professionals and those with that passion. So, so a, a big shout out to the teachers that we, we really want to encourage a little bit more of that in the future. So you were announced as the winner here in Australia, which meant that you then traveled over to Stockholm. Uh, you joined sort of 33 other winners from around the globe to present your project which is just an amazing opportunity. Um, tell us a couple of the other standout projects that you saw at the competition in Stockholm. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, um, the winners of the competition, the USA team, they created a device which um, is able to measure the amount of contaminants in a water and um, according to how much it's measuring, is able to um, disperse the correct amount of um, 
different chemicals which is able to clean the water and making it safe for drinking. Mm. Um, that was one that I was particularly inspired by. Also, I had a team next to me from Bangladesh who um, obviously in that country they have a big textiles industry and so they were looking at the waste and um, how that affects water in their country and then um, looking into different substances which is able to be cost effective and which is uh, one amazing thing is there um, it's able to be reusable mm -hmm. so they're able to put this substance into the water um, it's clears it of contaminants and it's able to be reused so it had a very viable application in that particular country it's amazing and obviously that um, exposure to all of these cultures and all of yes. these countries just I'm sure you've taken a lot away from that as well yeah definitely I think I've learned a lot about myself and a lot about different other cultures and you know met some people that hopefully I'll keep in touch with for the rest of my life mm -hmm. Sure. And so obviously uh, Xylem is our global sponsor for that award and they are also our sponsor here in Australia. And I understand that you got to visit the Xylem lab in Stockholm. And while you can't tell us everything about that, um, what was something that you were really inspired by the work that Xylem is doing? Yeah, look, I think um, just some amazing um, pieces of technology that are looking at disaster relief. I was particularly interested in in floods and, and water pumps and all of the work that they do. And we were lucky enough to be spoken to um, by the CEO of Xylem, um, which is very empowering and, and very inspiring and made me want to pursue um, this passion for water even more. Mm, that's so fantastic. So I guess uh, in conclusion, what's something that you would uh, like to tell? Let's start with something you'd like to communicate to the water industry here in Australia uh, about the, the future role of young people in yeah. water. Yeah, look, I mean, I think um, young people have amazing ideas and you know a lot of the time they may not be heard so I think um, one big thing that I'd like to get across is just listen to the ideas that young people have because I think we're going to be the people of the future um, <laughs> whether they like it or not and you know so I think um, we have a lot of great ideas which could be implied a lot of new approaches and perspectives on things so definitely just listen give them an ear yeah yeah I think that's fantastic advice and finally, um, something to wrap up about your experience of the Stockholm Junior Water Prize. Yeah, look, I mean, it's just indescribable. It was an amazing experience. I'd like to thank the Australian Water Association um, for their support during all of this. And um, just thank you. <laughs> it was amazing. One in a life, once in a lifetime opportunity. Well, it's been so fantastic that you are a representative of Australia in this competition um, and we see such bright things for you in the future. Um, so thank you and congratulations. Thank you.